Hello everybody, this is part two of my friend Nathan's tank. I hope you all enjoyed part one that I posted earlier, which many of you may have noticed did not have any commentary. In this video, I'm going to spotlight the fish just a little bit, but mainly give some overall thoughts on the entire tank itself. First off, this is the best I've seen this tank look. If you dig a bit in this channel, you can see earlier videos from maybe two or three years back and how things have progressed to this point. I think Nathan said it best when he described it as a frag tank that has gone wild. There's plugs of various corals growing on every flat surface of the tank, and of course the huge colonies of Acropora and Montipora. Some of them look like they're beach ball sized colonies. Let's first talk about the light, which some of you had questions about. The lighting used on this tank is really old by today's standards. There's four aqua illumination soul blues overhead and a single build my LED strip with mostly cyan colored LEDs. I think people tend to fixate on the latest and greatest fixtures that come out every year, but it goes to show you that it's possible to get great results from just about any type of lighting if you do a good job on every aspect of this hobby. Now I'll be the first to recommend Metal Halide and T5 for overall growth and color, but tanks like this show there's no denying you can get great results with LED. So if you're shopping now for lights, just pick a fixture that you like and then focus on the other things. I'd argue that picking the light is the easy part. It all works. Speaking of other things, there's a good amount of flow going through this system. In addition to the return pump, this system uses a combination of Tunzi powerheads, Jibao powerheads, which are essentially a, a Tunzi knockoff, and the new Maxpect gyre pumps. I haven't tried the gyre pumps myself, but Nathan's a big fan of them and is slowly phasing out the other pumps in favor of the gyre. With regard to filtration, it's a pretty straightforward system. The tank has a protein skimmer, refugium, some chemical filters, and a biopellet reactor. For the folks that are not familiar with the biopellet reactor, it's a tumbler that keeps biopellets in suspension. The pellets themselves are a carbon source for bacteria that binds up nitrates and phosphates. The constant motion of the pellets in the reactor scrubs off the bacterial film layer growing on the pellets, which are then skimmed out by the protein skimmer. This is why it's really common to see systems with biopellet reactors situating them very close to the intake of the skimmer pump. The bacteria that's not physically removed by the skimmer goes back to the display tank and it acts as a food source for the corals. There's a lot of discussion now about the role of bacterial colonies and coral nutrition and it's something that I've dabbled with but seeing tanks like this makes me that much more interested. There's several ways to dose carbon into your system. Um, I'm not gonna go over all of it here. I've tried vodka and it didn't have great results, so maybe I'll, uh, I'll give a reactor a try. Moving on to the chemistry. Water chemistry is maintained two ways, through two-part calcium and alkalinity additives and water changes. The two-part is added via dosing pumps controlled by an apex controller. Nathan tests his water once a week to make sure those levels stay consistent. Consistency of water chemistry is paramount. Some people fixate on specific numbers such as 420 calcium or 10 dKH, but in reality, as long as your water chemistry is in the range of natural salt water, you're pretty good provided that it remains consistent. Now maintaining that consistency is really the challenge here. I mean, let's be honest, most people in this hobby don't test their water that often to even know whether their parameters are changing or not. Anyhow, I know people are gonna ask, so the parameters in this tank, it's calcium is 410, alkalinity is 8.2 to 8.8, .8, magnesium is 1300, specific gravity is 1.024, and the nitrates are around two parts per million. What tends to help with consistency is water changes. One really cool thing Nathan set up in this build is a continuous water change system. It's essentially two SpectraPure liter meter dosing pumps that work in tandem to perform the water change. 
So multiple times a day, one pump extracts a small amount of water, while the second pump refills that same quantity from a large 55 gallon container that has pre-made salt water. If I recall correctly, it does about seven gallons a day. Okay, that pretty much uh, wraps up all I have to say on this tank. I think it's a spectacular aquarium and Nathan did a great job with it. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, post it in the comments below. Bye guys.